The ocean is often said to be one of the most likely places where cryptids may be found. It's arguably the most unexplored place on the planet. Both cryptozoologists, enthusiasts, and skeptics can agree that there are still multiple undiscovered species in it, especially in the deeper parts of the ocean. Throughout the history of deep sea expeditions, there have been multiple reports of animals that remain unidentified to this day. I'll be covering some of the most notable reports in this video. The Deep Star 4000 was a submersible design by legendary explorer Jacques Cousteau. The ship was able to take its passengers to a depth of 4,000 feet or about 1,200 meters, hence the name Deep Star 4000. In June of 1966, three men were aboard the Deep Star during a trip into the depths of the San Diego Trough. These men were Joe Thompson, a pilot, Jean LaFond, a marine biologist, and Jean's assistant, Dale Good. Joe Thompson was best known for his camera work, becoming a pioneer in the field of deep sea photography. Jean LaFond was an Eagle Scout and marine biologist who had decades of experience at various marine organizations. They were at about 4,000 feet when Thompson spotted something illuminated by the ship's light. There was what appeared to be a large shadow resting on the seabed. At first, Joe simply thought it was mud that was kicked up by the Deep Star's engine, but then he saw the eye. He estimated the eye to be about 15 centimeters or half a foot long, though he believed that it could have been much larger. Once he realized that he was looking at a massive fish, he noted the creature's large pectoral fin and gill plate cover. It was estimated to be about 25 feet long and 6 feet in width, or 7.5 meters by 2 meters. Joe noted that the creature was covered in visible scales, something that sharks he was familiar with didn't have. He also noted that the tail looked very jagged and strange, describing it as most similar to a coelacanth's. Due to the limited visibility of the craft, Thompson only saw the creature for a short while. The crew were conducting a scientific mission, and they had expensive equipment that would have been destroyed had the Deep Star taken off after the fish. Thompson quickly told the other passengers about the fish, however from their angles they weren't able to view it. The audio from the crew as the fish passed by was allegedly recorded, however this recording has never surfaced. There are a number of theories about what the creature was. The most common scientific explanation was that it was a Pacific sleeper shark. The sleeper shark is known to grow to a size almost as long as the deep star fish was estimated to be, and is common near the San Diego trough. However, the shark lacks scales, and has much smaller eyes and a different tail than the deep star fish. Joe maintained that the deep star fish was not a Pacific sleeper shark. He did believe that someday, another submersible would encounter the creature. William Beebe was an American naturalist, explorer, and marine biologist. During his career, Beebe went on multiple expeditions to the deep ocean in a ship known as the Bathysphere. The bathysphere was invented by engineer Otis Barton, and together, the two of them conducted a series of dives off the coast of Bermuda from the year 1930 to 1934. Their dives set several consecutive records for the deepest dive ever performed by humans. Their best record was 923 meters, or over 3,000 feet. The bathysphere was a metal sphere with a fused quartz window, through which the scientists inside could observe their surroundings. Although he spotted a number of normal animals, BB did report five species that remain unidentified to this day. The first sighting occurred on September 22, 1932. At a depth of 2,100 feet or 640 meters, BB spotted a pair of giant dragonfish, which were about 6 feet or 1.8 meters long. This is almost five times the length of a normal dragonfish. Additionally, they only had one row of bioluminescent lights, instead of the normal two. The other four fish were sighted on August 11th, 1934. At 1,500 feet or 457 meters, BB spotted the pallid sailfin. It was about 2 feet or 0.6 meters long, and had a small tail with very large vertical fins. It notably had a pale and sickly coloration. BB reported the five-lined constellation fish at 1,900 feet or 479 meters deep. He described it as a 5 by 6 inch or 12 by 15 centimeter fish with four or five lines of yellow lights with purple circles. 
Two lines were very distinctly curved above the middle line, and two more curved below. The three-starred anglerfish was spotted 2,470 feet or 752 meters deep. BB described it as fairly similar to a normal anglerfish, with a flatter mouth and short, even teeth. The most notable difference was that this anglerfish had three of the famous bioluminescent lures, while a normal anglerfish only has one. Finally, at 2,500 feet or 762 meters, BB spotted the abyssal rainbow gar. He described them as four gar-like fish with pointed scarlet bills and heads, the rest of the body had a light blue fading into clear yellow. Barton was along for each of the sightings, and he confirmed them all. There are a number of theories as to what these fish were, if they weren't new species. The five-lined constellation fish is often pointed out as a misidentification, with many theorizing that it was a comb jellyfish. The giant dragonfish is theorized to be a regular dragonfish or viperfish that BB misjudged the size of. Others speculate that he saw multiple dragonfish swimming in a row and mistook them as a singular one. The three-starred anglerfish is thought to be a regular anglerfish whose bioluminescent lights BB miscounted. The pallid sailfin is sometimes thought to be a small squid. There aren't prominent theories for the abyssal rainbow gar, beyond it being a misidentification of a needlefish. However, BB himself considered it the weakest sighting of the five. Unlike the others, he didn't give it a scientific name. There is some question as to whether or not BB and Barton partially hallucinated these sightings, due to a lack of oxygen. It should be mentioned that especially in the 1934 dives, the ship was outfitted and later upgraded with systems to regulate oxygen and carbon dioxide. Surprisingly, the bathysphere fish are some of the extremely rare cryptids that are actually in taxonomy lists, which are scientific lists of animals. The scientific name for the five-lined constellation fish, the giant dragonfish, and the pallid sailfin all appear on databases of animals like Zoobank. Mobot was an unmanned submersible used by the Shell Oil Company in the 1960s to look for oil deposits on the seafloor. What year the sighting took place is a mystery. There are multiple dates given, like 1962, 1963, and 1966, but the 1962 date is believed to be the most accurate. Mobot's operators were watching the cameras from an oil ship nearby when they spotted something strange in the water. Around 55 meters or 180 feet deep, a strange corkscrew-like creature came into view. It was about 15 feet or 4 meters in length, and 6 inches or 15 centimeters wide. It moved in a spiraling motion and according to the eyewitnesses, had a head and visible eyes. Two still images from the footage survive. There are a number of theories on what it was. A salt chain, a tinophore, or a siphonophore, but it remains unidentified to this day. In 1993, a British diver named Mike Clearly and his companion descended into the waters off the coast of Japan. They were using a diving bell, which is a device designed to help divers descend into water. The bell is lowered by a crane, and protects them from the pressure of the ocean, as well as anything in it. At a depth of 1,700 feet or 520 meters, an unknown creature began to circle the vessel. Clearly described it as 25 feet or 8 meters long. It had no visible scales, one dorsal fin running along the body, and it moved like a lamprey or eel in the water. The color of the skin changed as it became illuminated by the ship's light. The serpent's head was like a seahorse's, the eyes like a cow's, and the teeth like a barracuda's. The strangest detail is that the creature had two pairs of webbed limbs about 4 feet or 1.2 meters long. Limbs are very rare in fish. Only some lungfish and coelacanths have them today. Clearly's estimation of the creature's size is much larger than any known lungfish. It eventually left, and the serpent hasn't been seen since. Finally, we have the deepest cryptid encounter ever recorded. Marvin McCamus and Bill Rainey were engineers who designed and piloted the DSV Alvin, a deep-sea submersible that first entered service in June of 1964. During a July 1965 test in an area of the Bahamas known as the Tongue of the Ocean, the two eyewitnesses encountered a strange animal. It was around 40 or 50 feet, or 12 or 15 meters, in length. 
McCamus described the encounter as follows. We were down about 5,000 feet, and then I went down into a crevice about 300 feet deeper, under a slight outcrop. We went deeper because of the cable we were following spanned the crevice. It was right there that I spotted it. The first thing I noticed was the movement. I thought we were moving along the cable and checked for drift, but I found that the sub was stationary and that it was the object that was moving. It then occurred to me that perhaps it was a utility pole, especially because of its thick shape. I swung the sub in an arc to get a better view along the cable or pole or whatever it was, when I was astonished to see a thick body with flippers, a long neck, a snake-like head, and two eyes looking right at us. It looked like a big lizard with flippers. It had two sets of them. Then it swam upwards with its back turned, before we could get the cameras angled. While the two men reported the sighting, they later found that it had been removed from the record. According to McCamus, out of the three or four hundred dives he's made, this was the only time where he saw anything like it. At first glance, this description sounds like a plesiosaur, which is actually what McCamus said he saw when a colleague showed him a drawing of a plesiosaur. There is another major cryptozoological theory on what it is, however. The long-necked seal or long-necked sea serpent is an alleged species first described in detail by cryptozoologist Bernard Hovelmans. It's one of the most commonly cited aquatic cryptids, with over 100 alleged reports. It resembles what McCamus saw, but the long neck is usually considered to be a type of seal, not a reptile. Some species of seal are known to dive to extreme depths. Elephant seals have been recorded diving as deep as 5,962 feet or 1,817 meters. Assuming what the crew saw that day was a type of seal, this would be in the range of the Alvin sighting. As for why McCamus described a mammal as a reptile, it's theorized that he assumed it to be a plesiosaur, which subconsciously affected his description of it. As for non-cryptozoological theories, some believe the crew saw a type of squid. What makes deep sea cryptids fascinating is just how little of life we see down there. Compared to Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, it's much more difficult to go searching for them, due to how much has to be spent on expedition equipment. With scientific advancements, however, it's becoming much easier. Thanks to the EV Nautilus project, which records the seafloor, they're even being live-streamed on YouTube. Civilian ownership of submersibles is also becoming more common, and prices, while still expensive, are decreasing, which allows more people to own them. With an increase in deep-sea expeditions, perhaps we can one day discover some of these cryptids. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing it with someone you think may also enjoy it. If you'd like to help me out, consider supporting me on Patreon, link below. Any support you give me will help me make these videos faster. I will also have my other social media links in the description as well. If you want to see more cryptid videos, check out my Cryptid Iceberg series, where I cover hundreds of different cryptids, as well as my cryptid video playlist. If you enjoyed this video specifically, let me know in the comments. I do have a couple of cases that didn't make this video that I could do a part 2 with. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Chris for helping write and put this video together. I'd also like to thank the Encrypted Archive Wiki for helping provide much of the reading needed for this video. Special thank you to Ears, Ravendale, Equarep, Crash Course Cryptozoology, 1 Mega Alakazam 100, Deadman, Cameron McCormick, Tyler Greenfield, Satofin, Legitimate Pianist, and Michael Schemmel. I'd also like to thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.